ceramic production, both earthenware and silver, is embodied behavior. Um, passed down from one generation to the next, learned as a product of living with other people doing the same activities, much as one learns to speak. How did we learn to speak? Because sort of we're there. You learn to speak because you know, it's something we know. Apprentices internalize through bodily movements as much as through mental cognition, a sequence of direct manipulations of the clay. Thus, all the potters in a given village use either type A or type B or type C technology to make their earthenware pots. We never found a mixture of different technologies in one, one community. But we did find variations, obviously, in the communities in terms of expertise. Some women are really good potters, and it's fantastic. It's very interesting to find that one. And you look at the other one, and you think, well, they're doing good, but they're not <laughs> as good as that one. And one or two, they're just, just really outstanding. It's amazing how we sort of tend to, we think, drift to talking to those who are looking at videotaping hours on end for those. Uh, all potters could recognize who had made a pot. Thus, by extension, if we map all the villages where type A or B or C is used, we map social relationships embedded in technology. So back here to this map, these are social relationships here. There's relationships between these communities. So what are they? Well, where do the edges of these types lie? After seeing how different types intermingle in Northeast Thailand, we began exploring in all directions from there, Central North Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and beyond into Vietnam, and most recently into southern and central Yunnan province. And it's this experience uh, of drawing, of the difficulty of drawing boundaries, which has motivated or forced us to continue to work on this for 20 years. We saw how types of earthenware production processes continue across the hard edges, and here we do have a map with hard edges, of, of modern political boundaries and suggest connections based instead on shared technical packages. So here's the type A map. And by the way, the article for this is the article that's in Udaya uh, on um, Cambodian production, starts with Cambodian production, talks about pre-production in southern Vietnam, and then talks about production in northeast Thailand. We think that's all the same kind of production. Broadly speaking, type A earthenware production is centered in Cambodia, adjacent Vietnam, and northeast Thailand. We propose, propose that type A represents a type of earthenware production initially associated, associated with Khmer-speaking populations. The, the potters in northeast Thailand who use type A are known as Thai Korat potters and are said to descend from Khmer potters who married Thai soldiers hundreds of years ago and then within the last 100 to 150 years have moved out of their core across northeast Thailand and destroyed the, the other, the other stopped the other production that used to occur in that area. So that's the article that's called the industrial, uh, industrial household production that we published. Type B uh, production is, is dominant in southern and central Yunnan province, northern Thailand, and northern Laos, specifically in Muong Phuong. There used to be a village where it was made. I don't know if it still is there or not. Type B is associated with TAI-speaking groups who moved into the region from southeast China and northwest Vietnam and intermingled with older populations. Northeast Thailand is an interesting case, we believe, where the majority population is Lao, but the potting population is Thai Kara. We hypothesize that over the past two centuries, migratory groups of landless Thai Kara potters replace the type B potting women who had other work to do. Or could we? So they, those were the globe that type of potters made pots. And finally, type C. In contrast to these broad, the two broadly distributed types, type C appears to follow a long, narrow path associated with communities who speak variations of Austronesian or Malayo-Polynesian. This is for you and for the Indias. Uh, from Cham potters in South Central Vietnam, to related groups in Highland Vietnam, to Vietnamese potters near the coast in northern Vietnam, and that's the one way up there towards the top of the map. Okay? Those are Vietnamese. They speak Vietnamese. They're Kim, which is the ethnic name for Vietnamese. There they are Kim. They've always been Kim. We've never been out to the other to be Kim. But you make pots this way. You don't make it the way the other kid do. Why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, lovely to talk about. But 
then down here in Malaysia, northern Kelantan, I had a wonderful time to go live and stay overnight, two nights in the Malay community up uh, in Kotokawa, Kotowaru. And you've been there? Have you been? Okay, and this, this was 19, just after the conference that we were at. Oh, no, I, no, I, no. I, I went there and, and took the pictures of that and saw there, and, I, I, and we believe that that's all part of the same technological package. And so we believe it's a distribu distribution based upon sea lanes and North Indonesian speakers, et cetera, et cetera. It'd be interesting to see. We don't want to go there in sort of Southeast Asia. How do you make your pots in sort of Southeast Asia? There's, by the way, an excellent study of contemporary, a comparative study of pot making. Uh, there are pot making in New Guinea. But there's, as far as I know, no intensive cross the board study of Indonesian popping. In some, these maps of earthenware types propose a history for these groups of potters in the absence of written histories of movements, interactions, and technical dominance of subservience. Although much more needs to be done to um, make able to read them. In conclusion, the study of the various production technologies people in Southeast Asia, modern, mainland Southeast Asia, use to make earthenware and spillover pots offers a meaningful way, we think it's meaningful, to understand this region and its diversity. Just to, to be sure that you know that I, I got out of sequence with my slides here, and just to be sure that you know I know where, that we are in, uh, yes, near West Singapore, I hope that all of you brought here today by your interest in regional ceramics, will understand the importance of the survival of the Chinese founded stone growth kilns in far west Singapore, and that you will do all you can to embrace the cause of preserving them in the name of Singapore heritage. <laughs> <laughs>